Good morning. The secret place. The secret place. What is the secret place? Secret place is somewhere that you can resort to for cover, for rest, for nourishment, for peace. You know, when a man is made aware that his end is coming, the things that you once thought were so significant become infinitesimal. And it brings to your focus the things that you always ought to have, but then you realize that you're just a fleeting nothing. It takes being brought to one's end to realize just how much of a nothing you truly are. I believe that, because it's been shown me. And unless you're one of the super duper, you know, esoteric Christians, where everything is going just hunky-dory, a majority of us are going through something, whether it's physical, spiritual, mental, whatever it is, we're all going through something. And we don't go to the devil for comfort. We don't go to the devil for comfort. We go to the Lord for comfort. The Lord is our secret place. It is incumbent upon me to impress upon you the centrality of Jesus Christ in your lives as long as the Lord is allowing me. Because at the end of the line, dear friend, Jesus Christ he is all, and he is all you will ever need, okay? Because we, we can get, we can try to add on to things that are needful, but when it really comes down to it, there's only, like he says on the Martha's, you know, she was much cumbered about serving. And she goes to the Lord, she's like, Lord, dost thou not care that my sister doesn't help me to serve? Say to her, hey, help your sister serve. And the Lord's like, Martha, Martha, thou art cumbered about many things. But only one thing is needful. And your sister has chosen that uh, good part. And that won't be taken away from her. That was totally bradized, by the way. <laughs> but it's so true. Only one thing is needful. Now, we as man, mankind, of course, there are things that we need, right? One sec. Hmm, excuse me, I had to sneeze. But there are things that our body needs. There are things that are needful for the body. And our Lord knows what we need before we go to him. But see, he wants us to have that personal relationship. It's not a dialogue. Uh, uh, no, excuse me, it's not a monologue. Excuse me. It's not a monologue. It's a dialogue. Prayer. Being in that secret place with the Lord. Excuse me. It's not a monologue. It's a dialogue with the Lord. And the relationship that we are to have with our Savior, with the living God, is the most important aspect of your life that you can ever have. Because when things start going away from you, is the Lord Jesus Christ everything to you? You're going to say yes, but is he? Absolute suffering reveals, my friend. And absolute suffering reveals absolutely. And also, too, another good phrase that I've heard. You better deal with reality, or reality is going to deal with you. 
And the reality for us as the church of the living God is that Jesus Christ is come in the flesh. He is everything. He is either the God of all or, is he, or he is the God of nothing. There's no middle ground. Get your authorized version of the scriptures. And turn with me in your authorized version of the scriptures to the book of Psalms, Psalm 27. We're going to be starting out in the psalm. Life is in the psalms, my friend. I've said this to you before. But, you know, the first couple of psalms talks about someone who's just beginning on in their walk with the Lord. The middle psalm is someone who is halfway there. And then the last five psalms, five, the number of death, are as we are to go out, praise the Lord, praise the Lord. You cripple yourself if you do not spend time in the psalms at all, my friend. You do. But we're going to begin in Psalm 27. Follow me along, word for word, verse by verse, at the scriptures that we are going to be looking at today. Follow me along, keep me accountable, check me out, make sure I'm not lying to you, make sure I'm not skipping a groove. Be a Berean man, woman. Be a Berean, okay? Don't be one of these Christians that just sit there to get a little ear candy, to get their ear tickled, okay? And then when they come across something they don't understand or don't know, they're, they're ignorant and they say, don't judge. Be a Berean. For once in your life. Psalm 27, verses 1 under verse 5. The Lord is my light and my salvation. The Lord is the one who has given you life. The Lord is the one that has lit the pilot, if you will, behind the eyes. That light that everybody, even these wicked scoundrel devils, they have light in their eyes. That's given to them of the Lord. That doesn't mean that they're with the Lord themselves, but that means that the Lord has given them life. The Lord is my light and my salvation. Amen. The Lord Jesus Christ is our salvation. He is our life. He is the blessed hope. He is the resurrection. Okay? You cannot disassociate the things that the Lord does and has done, and will do, from him himself. Does that make sense? Because so many people seem to want to disassociate well, one thing from the Lord, and not attributing that one thing onto him. You know what I mean? For example, the redemption of the purchased possession, as an event in and of itself, but you cannot disassociate that from the Lord himself, because he is. He is the redemption of the purchased possession. Do you understand that? Okay? So, the Lord is my light and my salvation. I'm telling you. If you're saved, born again, converted of the church of the living God, and you're facing your end, the centrality that Jesus Christ ought to be in our lives becomes a far more apparent to you because there are those out there who are worried about their Christian career or their ministries or their popularity or their whatever interject a little flavor of death it, it brings it brings you a perspective that you need Whom shall I fear? The Lord is the strength of my life. Hallelujah. Of whom shall I be afraid? Well, you think I'm afraid of you? Uh, I got to stand before the Lord and give an account. When the wicked, even mine enemies and my foes, came upon me to eat up my flesh, they stumbled and fell. Still here. Though an host should encamp against me, 
my heart shall not fear. Though war should rise against me, in this will I be confident. One thing have I desired of the Lord, that will I seek after. One thing is needful, that I may dwell in the house of the Lord all the days of my life, to behold the beauty of the Lord, and to inquire in his temple. Noting the dispensational difference. Okay, this is our instruction in righteousness. For in the time of trouble, he shall hide me in his pavilion. In the secret of his tabernacle shall he hide me. He shall set me up upon a rock. Now that's a lowercase r. But who is our rock? Not Dwayne Johnson either. For in the time of trouble, he shall hide me in his pavilion. In the secret of his tabernacle shall he hide me. He shall set me up upon a rock. Amen. Amen. See, most Christians are not troubled as other men are. They're not troubled as we were of the church of the living God. They're not. And Proverbs 27, just, just one verse. Just one verse. Proverbs 27, verse 1. Boast not thyself of tomorrow, for thou knowest not what a day may bring forth. And then you go to James. You go to James chapter 4. James chapter 4. Verses 13 on to verse 16. James chapter 4. Verses 13 on to verse 16. That was uh, verse 1 in Proverbs 27, by the way. Sorry, I didn't say that. James chapter 4. Verses 13 on to verse 16. Go to now. Go to now. Now. I like that. Ye that say, today or tomorrow we will go into such a city and continue there a year and buy and sell and get gain. Whereas ye know not what shall be on the morrow. For what is your life? It is even a vapor that appeareth for a little time and then vanisheth away. For that ye ought to say, If the Lord will, we shall live and do this or that. And now ye rejoice in your boastings. All such rejoicing is evil. Now you got to remember that this is written for the Jewish people during the time of Jacob's trouble. Okay? But what crosses the dispensational line is... I am one who totally believes in the imminent return of Jesus, meaning that he's going to reclaim his purchased possession. I believe that can happen at any moment. Absolutely. Absolutely. And just because it hasn't happened for a long time since I myself have been praying for it, isn't going to harden me against that hope that it could happen at any time. That's a problem with some certain people. Okay? But you know what else is imminent? The fact that you could die. You could be stark raving healthy. A health nut. As it's so called. Okay? You could be walking on your dog and a piano can fall on your head. The end is imminent. It might not be today. But it's imminent. The redemption of the purchased possession, it is imminent. Might not be today, but it could be. If this was going to be your last day, your last hour, your last minute, what would you do? What would you do? Well, I would do the things that I was always afraid to. Why? And what are those? Something sinful? That's what it is, isn't it? It's like you know you're, you're on a plane and you got 
10 minutes to live, right? What are you going to do? What are you going to do? Well, what can you do? What are you going to do? And Luke chapter 12, Luke chapter 12. I believe that we ought to be living our lives in an anticipation and be aware that in any given moment, any given moment, we can hear, come hither, or any given moment, your ticker could stop. Something could happen. You could slip on a bar of soap. You can, you could be out trying to get your mail in a car, can come from nowhere and blop, run you over. Luke chapter 12, verses 16 on to verse 21. We've got to remember this, this warning here. We don't know what's going to be today. We don't know if we're going to hear, come up hither. We don't know if some freak accident is going to happen. And we're going to go stand before the Lord. Are you ready for that? A lot of us, we, we give lip service to this, don't we? Well, yeah, yeah, oh, yeah. But I'm telling you, brother, sister, I'm telling you, when the reality of it comes upon you, you need to truly be ready. Now, we know that we're going to, you know, absent from the body, present with the Lord, yes. But the actual going through it. That's where these, a lot of these tough guys, you see what kind of measure of meat they really are. Well, let's, let us not forget this. Luke chapter 12, verse 16, on verse 21. And he spake a parable unto them, saying, a, The ground of a certain rich man brought forth plentiful. Ah, yeah, the love of money is the root of all evil, for which, while some coveted after, they have erred from the faith. And pierced themselves through with many sorrows. Yeah. And he thought within himself, saying, What shall I do? Because I have no room where to bestow my fruits. Look at all this bounty that I have. Oh, I'm so blessed. Let me tell you how blessed I am. Make me sick. Tell me how great the Lord is. Don't tell me how great you are because of his blessings. Tell me how great he is. Okay. Yes, the blessings are great, but tell me about the blessor. See. And he said, this will I do. I'll pull down my barns and build greater. And there will I bestow all my fruits and my goods. And I will say to my soul, soul, thou hast much goods laid up for many years. Take thine ease Eat, drink, and be merry, for tomorrow we die. And what does our Lord say of that in Isaiah? Let us eat and drink, for tomorrow we die. One second, please. Beg your pardon. Isaiah chapter 22, verses 12 on to verse 14. And in that day, Isaiah 22, verses 12 on to verse 14. And in that day did the Lord God of hosts call to weeping and to mourning and to baldness and to girding with sackcloth. And behold, joy and gladness, slaying oxen and killing sheep, eating flesh and drinking wine. Let us eat and drink for tomorrow we shall die. And over here in Luke chapter 12, this guy says, And I will say to my soul, Soul, thou hast much goods laid up for many years. Take thine ease, eat, drink, and be merry. How would you spend the last moments of your life if you knew they were coming? You don't know if they're coming, though. That's the thing, right? Right? Could happen at any moment. 
and forever regret the chance that was never taken. The chance to step out of that boat for the Lord. That chance to pray for someone who you've neglected to pray for. And in Isaiah chapter 22, verse 14, and it was revealed in mine ears by the Lord of hosts. Surely this iniquity shall not be purged from you till ye die, saith the Lord of hosts. And back in Luke chapter 12, <clears throat> verse 20, But God said unto him, Thou fool. Thou fool. You've laid up for your supper. This night thy soul shall be required of thee then who shall those things be which thou hast provided? So is he that layeth up treasure for himself and is not rich toward God. I have not seen the righteous forsaken or his seed begging bread. My, our dear brother from North Dakota, he had the rug basically pulled out from under him, misdiagnosed by these wicked Jesuit doctors misdiagnosed but yet the Lord has provided for him miraculously it's a blessing to hear and to see how our Lord has provided for our brother in North Dakota love you brother our brother Alexander all the things that are going on and how the Lord has provided him with all that he needs our brother from Croatia Everything that the Lord has provided for him according to his needs. I've not seen his seed, uh, his people forsaken or his seed begging bread. He gives to those who are his. He provides for their needs. Not your greeds, but for your needs. You got to be careful. You got to be careful. There's nothing wrong with saving up when you can and if you are able. There's nothing wrong with that. Absolutely not. But if you put all your stock upon that, like my earthly father, millionaire, first one to tell you. But God said unto him, Thou fool, this night thy soul shall be required of thee. Then whose shall those things be which thou hast provided? Oh, it will all go to the church building. So the savings that you have saved up there, rich man, you're, you're going to be, oh, it's going to all be donated to the church. So it's going to go to the Vatican. Bravo. Bravo. I bet you're very proud, aren't you? Psalm 56. Psalm 56. Brethren, uh, you know, I'm not doubting uh, the brethren's salvation, but we take for granted life. We do. It doesn't matter who you are of the church of the living God. You take life for granted. It's when you are made aware that, hey, get your house in order. Your time is running out. That's when you get to realize, when you actually, you know, wow. Even though you strive every day to serve the Lord, amen, amen, hallelujah, you do. It's something in our nature as fallen man, as being trapped in this skin suit. We take life for granted, don't we? You say that you don't, I call you liar. Unless, unless you've, you've been here and tasted these things. A day shouldn't be wasted to spend time with the Lord in prayer and reading his word. God, Lord, mercy, Lord, Jesus Christ, may the brethren spend more time in your word. Enough of your excuses. You're too, you're too busy to spend at least a little time in the scriptures, at least reading a proverb a day. And the brethren know. They come to me with that. They, they, and it's nothing but love between us. 
but they know that they're not going to get sympathy from me on that. <laughs> You're not. You're not. Okay? Psalm 56. Be merciful unto me, O God, for man would swallow me up. He fighting daily oppresseth me. Think of how flesh, how man fights against you daily. You got to do this. You got to get this done. You got to put your focus on this. And the Lord's like, Martha, chill. One thing is needful. One thing is needful. Mine enemies would daily swallow me up, for they be many that fight against me, O thou most high. What time I am afraid, I will trust in thee. Psalm 32. Hold your place here. Psalm 32, verses 6 and 7. Psalm 32, verses 6 and 7. For this shall everyone that is godly pray unto thee in a time when thou mayest be found. Surely in the floods of great waters, surely in the floods of great waters, they shall not come nigh unto him. Thou art my hiding place. Thou shalt preserve me from trouble. Thou shalt compass me about with songs of deliverance, Silah. See, you got to be aware too. The Lord is our, hide, our hiding place. But we don't go to the Lord to hide ourselves from reality. No, 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 no. We hide ourselves in the Lord that we may face reality. You get it? See, there are some in Christianity that will take this and twist this and say that you just hide in the Lord and do nothing for him. And that you, you don't serve him. That you don't wait upon him. Okay? Not sitting there waiting like, oh, yeah, oh, yeah, oh, yeah. No, waiting upon him, serving him. Doing the works of the Lord. Okay? Whatever it is he's called you to do. You have today. What are you going to do with it? What are you going to do with it? Okay? Stop making your excuses. You don't hide in the Lord to escape reality. You hide in the Lord that you make say to reality, bring it on. Let's go. The ultimate truth to the reality that is there today is the Lord himself. The Lord is reality. The Lord is reality. And this is reality. He is our hiding place. But like I said, we don't hide in him to escape. We hide in him to press on, to face it. Okay? Let's continue in Psalms 56. In God I will praise his word. In God I have put my trust. I will not fear what flesh can do unto me. Because the most they can do is kill you. They can't kill your soul. And seeing how the Jesuits are our enemies, Satan and his army, of course, um, they'll go after your family. They'll go and try to give everything. But see, they can't kill you. They can't kill your soul. They can kill your body, but they can't kill your soul. Okay? Let's continue. Every day they rest my words. All their thoughts are against me for evil. They gather themselves together. They hide themselves. They mark my steps when they wait for my soul. But see, they can't get to the soul. Shall they escape by iniquity? In thine anger cast down the people, O God. Oh, because judgment, uh, because sentence against an evil work isn't executed speedily. Therefore, the hearts of the sons of men is set in them to do evil. You're not going to get away with it there, pal. Neither are you. Thou tellest my wanderings. Put thou my tears into thy bottle. Are they not in thy book? Our days are numbered. 
I believe that. See, the Lord knows what you're going to do. He knows what tomorrow brings. He knows the future. He's, he's outside of our time. He's eternal, okay? Time to the Lord is nothing, okay? You know, a thousand years is like a day to the Lord. A day is like a thousand years. He's outside of our time frame, okay? Time to our Lord does not exist as it does exist to us right here, right now, okay? The Lord knew, the Lord knew that I was going to smoke cigarettes. The Lord knew that I was going to get drunk off of alcohol. The Lord knew I was going to do drugs. The Lord knew I was going to fornicate. The Lord knew I was going to do, do sodomite things. The Lord knew I was going to have an affair with a married woman. The Lord knew, the Lord knew. And that was all encompassed in the package that you see here. That's all in consideration. He knows the end from the beginning, your days are numbered. And knowing that our days are numbered and we are in the Lord, that ought to give us a sublime confidence in him, to serve him, knowing that our time isn't going to end unless he so allows it. Even, even some of these crazies who want to be foolish and ah, eat a bullet, okay? Su suicide is, uh, suicide is, not, I beg your pardon, brother, and I forgot to mute this. Suicide is not going to put you in hell. Um, not being saved, not being washed by the blood of the crucified one, okay? That's what's going to put you in hell. Uh, if you're of the church of the living God and you decide to ah, eat a bullet, uh, that's not going to make you lose your salvation. <laughs> no, but the Lord's going to be ashamed of you for eternity. It's a permanent solution to a temporary problem. And these are light afflictions, okay? But our days are numbered. There is a number of the days that the Lord has allotted to every one of us. How are we going to spend those days? And when he gives you a glimpse that, hey, guess what? Your days are coming to an end. Don't know exactly when, but you better be prepared. And those of you babes in Christ, you are the ones who need to get this the most. You might not have tomorrow. Live like that. That doesn't mean be flippant. That doesn't mean be careless. But that means don't be afraid of men. Don't be afraid to try. Don't be afraid to fail. You know, it makes me wonder how much fear racks the church of the living God from them going out and serving the Lord. Verse 9. When I cry unto thee, then shall mine enemies turn back. This I know, for God is for me. Psalm 61. Psalm 61. Psalm 61. Verses 1 on to verse 4. Psalm 61. Verses 1 on to verse 4. Hear my cry, O God, attend unto my prayer. From the end of the earth will I cry unto thee. When my heart is overwhelmed, lead me to the rock that is higher than I, our Lord Jesus Christ. For thou hast been a shelter for me and a strong tower from the enemy. I will abide in thy tabernacle forever. I will trust in the covert of thy wings. Selah. Trust in the covert of his wings. That doesn't mean God has wings. It's a figure of speech. We hide in the Lord that we may face reality. Not hide that we don't do anything. But we hide in him that we may. That makes sense? Now let's continue. Verses 10 and 11. And God, I will praise his word. He says it again. In the Lord will I praise his word. In God have I put my trust. I will not be afraid what man can do unto me. Psalm 119, of course. Psalm 119. 
Psalm 119, Zane. Zane. Psalm 119, Zane. Well, you don't know what that is. Haven't I told you? Learn to identify Psalm 119 by the heading above each bracket there. You don't know what that is? I'm not going to tell you. I'm going to make you look. Okay, if you have a set of scriptures that doesn't have this, the heading there. Okay, verses 49 on to verse 50, 56. That's Zane, okay? Remember the word unto thy servant, upon which thou hast caused me to hope. This is my comfort in my affliction, for thy word, lowercase w, hath quickened me, made me alive. You know the scriptures, reading the scriptures? Cut you, make you bleed, beat you to smithereens, smack you upside the head, pat you on the head, caress your cheek, kiss you, love you, encourage you, strengthen you. Everything that you need is right here, friend. And the Lord, through this, through his words, gives you what you need. The proud have had me greatly in derision, yet have I not declined from thy law. I remembered thy judgments of old, O Lord, and have comforted myself. Yes, yes, and have comforted myself. Yeah, Romans chapter 15. Come on. Romans chapter 15, just one verse. Of course, just one verse. Romans chapter 15, one verse, verse 4. For whatsoever things were written aforetime were written for our learning, that we through patience and comfort of the scriptures might have hope. Yeah, yeah. Psalm 119 saying again, I rem verse 52, I remembered thy judgments of old, O Lord, and have comforted myself. And what does our Lord say in John 17, 17? Sanctify them through thy truth. Thy word is truth. John 17, 17. If you don't have that one uh, memorized by now, brethren. <laughs> Sanctify them through thy truth. Thy word is truth. And John 16, 13. How be it when he, the spirit of truth, and the Lord is that spirit, is come. He will guide you into all truth, for he shall not speak of himself, but whatsoever he shall hear, that shall he speak, and he will shew you things to come. Back to uh, Zane, Psalm 119. Horror hath taken hold upon me because of the wicked that forsake thy law. Does it not bother you of what's going on today? If it doesn't, you better check your pulse, brother, sister. Thy statutes have been my songs in the house of my pilgrimage. In the house, in the house of my pilgrimage. Look at that. Thy statutes have been my songs. Have you ever literally sang a psalm before? Thy statutes have been my songs in the house of my pilgrimage. I have remembered thy name, O Lord, in the night, and have kept thy law. This I had, because I kept thy precepts. Now, you've got to remember the dispensational difference here. But this is our instruction on righteousness. Happy you will be. Happy you will be if you do what the Lord says. Okay? Now, go back to Psalm 56. Let's finish this up. Verse 12, on to the close. Thy vows are upon me, O God. I will render praises unto thee, for thou hast delivered my soul from death. My soul from death. My soul from death. And this does not talk about soul annihilationism. Okay? The second death. Going to the lake of fire. The Lord has delivered our soul from the lake of fire. The second death. Okay? 
Doesn't mean that your soul gets annihilated. No, no. Yes, he can destroy your soul, but he's not going to. You're going to be, for those of you who are not saved, you're going to be tormented for eternity in hell in the lake of fire. Why are you messing around? For thou hast delivered my soul from death. Wilt not thou deliver my feet from falling? That I may walk before God in the light of the living, to be an uh, ambassador unto our Lord Jesus Christ. Now Psalm 91. Psalm 91. Again, brother, sister, you're not in the Psalms at all. You are crippling yourself. You are crippling yourself. You're missing out. You're missing out. Psalm 91, verses 1 on verse 10. He that dwelleth in the secret place of the Most High shall abide under the shadow of the Almighty. I will say of the Lord, He is my refuge and my fortress, my God, in Him will I trust. Hmm. Surely he shall deliver thee from the snare of the fowler and from the noisome pestilence. You know, the look at, look at verse 1. He that dwelleth in the secret place of the Most High shall abide under the shadow of the Almighty. The secret place. The secret place is a place where the world, the flesh, and the devil cannot touch you. That time of prayer. But see, that secret place. That secret place. The Lord in you. You see, now, hold your place here. Go to 2 Corinthians chapter 11. Go to 2 Corinthians chapter 11. Come on. The secret place. Now, First Corinthians, Brett. Second Corinthians, chapter eleven. Let's look at let's look at an example of this at our uh, at our example to the Jew first and also to the Gentile for this dispensation. Paul, the apostle, the apostle of the Gentile, yes, but also an example onto the Jew, the Hebraic people. Okay. Second Corinthians eleven, verses twenty one on to verse twenty nine. I speak as concerning reproach, as though we had been weak, howbeit wherein soever any is bold, I speak foolishly. He's speaking foolishly because he's got to defend him. He has been battered and beaten and uh, uh, accused of, and, and Paul was accused. Berated, derided, okay? Accusation upon act, and he let a lot he let a lot of stuff roll off his back until it reached the point where he was left no choice, but he had to defend himself. Okay? Most people at the first instant will put up the dukes. Paul let a lot of stuff roll off his back. Okay? And a lot of people will use this as a you know, well, Paul did it. Well, yes, he did. But look at what it took for Paul to finally reach this point. Okay? To do and to speak in a way that he knew wasn't truly edifying unto the Lord because he was edifying himself. But in that edification of himself, it was still unto the Lord. Let's see. Okay? I speak as concerning reproach, as though we had been weak. Howbeit wherein soever any is bold, I speak foolishly, I am bold also. Are they Hebrews? So am I. Are they Israelites? So am I. Are they the seed of Abraham? So am I. Are they ministers of Christ? I speak as a fool. <laughs> I am more. He doesn't want to speak like this, but he's compelled. Why? Because continuous barrage and accusation not just one offense you know why not rather you take wrong what is your thin that is your skin that thin apparently it is for a lot of people okay are they ministers of Christ I speak as a fool I am more 
and labor is more abundant, and stripes above measure, and prisons more frequent, and deaths oft. Would Paul do this just for something that he was doing out of his own power? No. No. Of the Jews, five times received I, forty stripes save one. Thrice was I beaten with rods, once was I stoned, thrice I suffered shipwreck. A night and a day I have been in the deep, in journeyings often, in perils of waters, in perils of robbers, in perils by mine own countrymen, in perils by the heathen, in perils in the city, in perils in the wilderness, in perils in the sea, in perils among false brethren. In weariness, in painfulness, in watchings often, in hunger and thirst and fastings often, in cold and nakedness. Beside those things that are without, that which cometh upon me daily, the care of all the churches. And he's not talking about a building. He's talking about the people. Who is weak? And I am not weak. Who is offended that I burn not? If I must needs glory, I will glory of the things which concern mine infirmities. I had to add that. Things that concern mine infirmities. And also, 2 Timothy chapter 3, got to make a reference to this. Got to make a reference to this. 2 Timothy chapter 3, verses 12 and 13. Yea, and all they and all that will live godly in Christ Jesus shall suffer persecution. <laughs> but evil men and seducers shall wax worse and worse, deceiving and being deceived. You know, looking at Psalm uh, 91, verse 1 again, he that dwelleth in the secret place of the Most High shall Abide under the shadow of the Almighty. The world, the flesh, and the devil, they beat Paul, wounded him, afflicted him. What were they trying to beat out of Paul? Paul couldn't have done what he did unless the Lord was in him, unless he was of the church of the living God. There is much that we can do in our flesh, unfortunately. But there comes a point, a moment, where the flesh is going to fail. And even that spirit of man will fail. And you'll have to hide, you'll have to go to a rock that is greater than I. The world couldn't beat it out of him. The devil, the flesh couldn't beat it out of him. What were they trying to... Jesus Christ! Jesus Christ! Our hiding place. The Lord himself, that seal until the day of redemption. The Lord, our hiding place. That's what they were trying to get Paul beat out of Paul with the stonings, the whippings, the shipwrecks, the fastings, the, the perils that he encountered. They weren't trying to whip Paul just of himself. No, they were trying to beat Christ out of him. But see, he dwelt in that secret place. The Lord himself. How can you go through this? How can you not be afraid? I know where I'm going to go. The Lord is in me. Who shall I fear? You're going to die soon. Yeah. Who should I fear? Who should I fear? The secret place. The Lord within. I'm doing this because the Lord is within us. The Lord is, is within me. Do you not understand how central the Lord needs to be in your life? You know it here. You know it here. Yes, you do. You know it here. Do you know it here? Do you? Do you? I will save the Lord. He is my refuge 
and my fortress, my God, and him will I trust. Surely he shall deliver thee from the snare of the fowler and from the noisome pestilence. He shall cover thee with his feathers, and under his wings shalt thou trust. His truth shall be thy shield and buckler, you know, taking upon you the whole armor of God that you may be able to withstand against the wiles of the devil. The helmet of salvation, the law, having your loins girt with truth, the breastplate, the shield, and the sword of the Spirit. Okay? Thou shalt not be afraid for the terror by night, nor for the, for the arrow that flieth by day, nor for the pestilence that walketh in darkness, nor for the destruction that wasteth at noonday. A thousand shall fall at thy side, and ten thousand at thy right hand, but it shall not come nigh thee. Only with thine eyes shalt thou behold and see the reward of the wicked. Because, right here, thou hast made the Lord, which is my refuge, even the Most High, thy habitation. There shall no evil befall thee, neither shall any plague come nigh thy dwelling. Now, that does not mean that you won't get sick. That doesn't mean that you won't see evil. But what this means is eternally. You have to be eternally minded. The most they're going to do to you is kill you. After that, there's nothing they can do. They can, they can cut off your head and put your limbs on towers or whatnot. But that's it. That's it. The Jesuits and all the daughters of the whore can't kill your soul. They can't. They can't, dear friend. Isaiah chapter 25, verses 1 on to verse 5. Isaiah chapter 25, verses 1 on to verse 5. O Lord, thou art my God. I will exalt thee. I will praise thy name, for thou hast done marvel, thou hast done wonderful things. Thy counsels of old are faithfulness and truth. For thou hast made of it a city an heap, of a defense city a ruin, a palace of strangers to be no city. It shall never be built, trusting in the high walls of their city, in their strength and numbers. One thing is needful. One thing is needful. Therefore shall the strong people glorify thee. The city of the terrible nations shall fear thee. For thou hast been a strength to the poor, a strength to the needy in his distress. Blessed are the poor, for they shall inherit the earth. It's not talking just about lack of fundage, brethren. For thou hast been a strength to the poor, a strength to the needy in distress, a refuge from the storm, a shadow from the heat, when the blast of the terrible ones is as a storm against the wall. Look at verse 3. I might have skipped that. Okay, excuse me. Therefore shall the strong people glorify thee. The city of the terrible nation shall fear thee. The strong people. Who are the strong people? Look at, look, look at this. Look at this. For thou hast been a strength to the poor, a strength to the needy in distress. Therefore shall the strong people glorify thee, comma, the city of the terrible nation shall fear thee. Who are truly the strong people? See, the people that glory in their flesh and things of the flesh, the religions of the flesh, their strength is only skin suit deep. But we who abide in the secret place, our Lord Jesus Christ himself, who are the strong ones? See, religion and Christianity wants you to believe that they're the strong ones because they have the things of the eyes, the buildings, the numbers, like the Catholics. If Jesus had a church, it would be the biggest one. 
church of the living God is that big. But the church of that man of sin, the son of perdition, who is going to in his visage, I believe, thank you, brother, resemble the Roman Catholic Jesus. Um, yeah. Yeah. The church of that man of sin, the son of perdition, the church of Satan, yeah. That glory in flesh, in their buildings. The strong ones, dear brethren, are the weak. Go oh, imagine that, huh? Verse 5 Thou shalt bring down the noise of strangers as the heat in a dry place, even the heat with the shadow of a cloud. The branch of the terrible one shall be brought low. Looking, looking at verses 3 and 4 again. Therefore shall the strong people glorify thee. The city of the terrible nation shall fear thee. For thou hast been a strength to the poor, a strength to the needy in his, in his distress, a refuge from the storm, a shadow from the heat, when the blast of the terrible ones is as a storm against the wall. And note, terrible nations and terrible ones. Who are the strong ones? Hmm. Second Corinthians. Second Corinthians chapter 2. Oh, it's chapter 12. Second Corinthians chapter 12. The truly strong ones, brethren, are the ones who are weak in Christ Jesus. 2 Corinthians chapter 12, verses 7 on verse 10. And lest I should be exalted above measure through the abundance of the revelations. There was given me a thorn in the flesh, the messenger of Satan to buffet me. Keep you humble. Messenger of Satan. And remember, Satan has everything to do with the flesh. He savors not the things that be of God, but the things that be of man. Remember, Satan was cursed to crawl on the earth and to eat dust. We're made of dust. Remember that. Hmm. A messenger of Satan to buffet me, lest I should be exalted above measure. For this thing I besought the Lord thrice, that it might depart from me. Oh, my heart problem. Lord. Lord. Come on. Could you heal me? And he said unto me. My grace is sufficient for thee. For my strength. Is made perfect in weakness. Most gladly, therefore, will I rather glory in my infirmities that the power of Christ may rest upon me. My grace is sufficient for me. Yeah, we're talking again about this thing about self-sufficiency versus Christ dependency. you got to be Christ-dependent. Christ will move you to do. Yes, he will. But unless the Lord build the city, the watchman waketh but in vain. Unless the Lord keep the city. Therefore I take pleasure in infirmities, in reproaches, in necessities, in persecutions, in distresses for Christ's sake. For when I am weak, then am I strong. When you are weak, then you are strong. When you reach that point, it's like, Lord, there, I can't do anything. The Lord has made man's mouth. Lord can quicken, make you alive to do according to his will.
And Philippians chapter 4, of course, we have, we have to go to Philippians chapter 4. We have to go to Philippians chapter 4. We have to. We have to. An, a, a portion of scripture which the Christians have trivialized. Philippians chapter 4, verses 11 on to verse 13. Not that I speak in respect of one, for I have learned in whatsoever state I am, therewith to be content. I know both how to be abased and how to abound, and I know how to abound. Everywhere and in all things I am instructed both to be full and to be hungry, both to abound and to suffer need. I can do all things through Christ which strengtheneth me. And see, Christianity has trivialized this. They, they throw this out as a means to get their fleshly desires. All the while neglecting about how Paul knew what it means to be abound, to abound and to suffer need. Isaiah chapter 26. Isaiah chapter 26. Just two verses. Isaiah chapter 26. Verses 20 on to verse 21. Come, my people, enter thou into thy chambers, and shut thy doors about thee. Hide thyself as it were for a little moment, until the indignation be overpassed. For behold, the Lord cometh out of his place to punish the inhabitants of the earth for their iniquity. The earth also shall disclose her blood, and shall no more cover her slain. And right away, this is not part of my notes. Um... Psalm 102, <clears throat> Psalm 102, verses 12 and 13. But thou, O Lord, but thou, O Lord, shalt endure forever, and thy remembrance unto all generations. Thou shalt arise. And have mercy upon Zion for the time to favor her. Yea, the set time is come. Alleluia. 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 Matthew chapter 11. Matthew chapter 11. Come on. Are you abiding in the Lord? Hmm? Matthew 11 verses 28 on to verse 30. Come unto me. All ye that labor and heavy laden, and I will give you rest. Take my yoke upon you. Do what he says. Do as he says. You come to him on his terms. Yes. Broken, contrite, and in fear of him. Yes. You don't boot the door out of the way. You go through the door. He is the door. You do it his way. Take my yoke upon you and learn of me, for I am meek and lowly in heart, and ye shall find rest unto your souls. That secret place that the world, the flesh, and the devil tried to beat out of Paul. That the world, the flesh, and the devil tried even to beat out of you. It's not you. We, we wrestle not against flesh and blood, right? Right? Okay. Ephesians 6. Ephesians 6. Right? Ephesians 6, 12. For we wrestle not against flesh and blood, but against principalities, against powers, against the rulers of darkness of this world, against spiritual world wickedness in high places. The world of flesh and the devil is trying to beat Christ out of you and they, and it, they can't. That's the secret place. The Lord is that secret place. Do you understand? Are you abiding there? For my yoke is easy and my burden is light. John chapter 14. John chapter 14. Verse, verse 27. Peace I leave with you. My peace I give unto you. Not as the world giveth. A temporary peace. 
You don't go to the devil for, for peace. God forbid, man. Peace I leave with you. My peace I give unto you. Not as the world giveth, give I unto you. Let not your heart be troubled, neither let it be afraid. And reference here, uh, verses 1 and 3 in John 14. Let not your heart be troubled. You believe in God, believe also in me. Because if you continue to read, Jesus Christ is the Father. Okay. In my Father's house are many mansions. If it were not so, I would have told you. I go to prepare a place for you. And if I go and prepare a place for you, I will come again. And receive you unto myself, that where I am, there ye may be also. Where I am, there ye may be also. And wherever you are, there is the Lord's servant. John chapter 16, verses 32 and 33. Behold, the hour cometh, yea, is now come, that ye shall be scattered, every man to his own, and shall leave me alone. And yet I am not alone, because the Father is with me. There are those of you out there who deal with loneliness. Oh, I know it. Who desire a help meet. But you're not alone. And, and you say, what do you say? It's like, yes, I know I'm not alone. Like uh, at Lazarus, when he went to, I, I believe it was Mary, I believe it was, not not his mother, <laughs> okay, but I believe at the tomb of Lazarus, when, she, when the Lord says, your brother will uh, rise again, and she says, I know he'll rise again, Lord. I don't think she said it like that. She, but she's like, yes, I know that he's going to rise again. I know. But if you had been there. And what happened? Lazarus, come forth. Brought him back to life. S same principle. Yes, I know I'm not alone. But, yes, I know he'll live again. But. Easy for you to say, Brad, you got to help me. No, it's not. Every one of us is going to have to give an account of himself. I'm not going to be able to hold my wife's hand while he's standing before the Lord. She's not going to be able to have her arms around me while I'm standing before the Lord. Okay? You might be alone in flesh. You might not have someone there physically. But what is the Lord doing through you? What interactions are you having? Maybe that thing that you are looking for, okay, beg your pardon, brethren. Maybe that thing that you are looking for is already there before you, but in a way that you're not perceiving. Because I know a lot of people deal with loneliness. And God the Father, Jesus Christ, by his disciples who earlier said, though all the world be offended, like Peter, though everyone be offended and whatnot, yet I won't deny you. And yet he denied him three times atrociously. And the Lord looked on him. And they all said, we're not going to abandon you. And that's what they did in fulfillment with Scripture. Verse 33, these things have I spoken unto you, that in me, that in me, ye might have peace. In the world, ye shall have tribulation. Be of good cheer. I have overcome the world. In me, note that in me. Like I said, brethren, so many of us give lip service to the, I know I'm not alone. I know there's a resurrection of the dead. I know. See, I know. But I know that Christ is the center, uh, the center of all things. I know that Christ is supposed to be my all. 
But I have... As long as I got, this is something that I need to instill upon you. Because even the finest of the King James Bible believing Christians are not on that centrality of the Lord himself alone. Definitely Christianity isn't. Christ is there, their Christ is there just to reward them with worldly things. When Jesus Christ is, is our reward. Second Timothy. Second Timothy chapter four. Second Timothy chapter four. Come on, fingers. We're, we're almost done with this. Verses 16 and 18. On to 18. At my first answer, no man stood with me, but all men forsook me. I pray God that it may not be laid to their charge. Notwithstanding, the Lord stood with me and strengthened me, that by me, okay, the Lord, all men forsake you, right? But the Lord stands with you. And strengthens you, why? That by me the preaching might be fully known. The purpose of serving him. Listen, you might not have a help me. Think of what you are able to do for the Lord, not having a help me. Hey, having a help me is beautiful. Praise the Lord for it. But those of you who are single, those of you who deal with loneliness, okay? Your wife isn't there. She did, you know, you're separated. Stop. Take a step back and analyze just what the Lord has been doing through you, brother, sister. Look at it. Take a step back and look at it. That the preaching might be known. You might not be preaching out of the scriptures daily. You might not be doing videos. You might not be passing out tracts. But that preaching can be your physical witness. How you interact. How you behave according to the scriptures. Take a step back and analyze. Look at it for what it really is. You might be surprised. Might be pleasantly surprised. Notwithstanding, the Lord stood with me and strengthened me. Why? That by me the preaching might be fully known, and that all the Gentiles might hear. And I was delivered out of the mouth of the lion. And the Lord shall deliver me from every evil work, and will preserve me unto his heavenly kingdom, to whom be glory forever and ever. Amen. Amen. And some examples of this, look in Acts chapter 18, not John, Brad. Acts chapter 18, okay? When Paul was preserved. Uh, Acts chapter 18, verses, and this is when Paul was uh, going, to, you know, dealing with the Corinthians. The Corinthians, okay? Two whole books in scripture dedicated onto the church, the body, the people of Corinth, Okay? Okay, the the example of um, those who are of the church of the living God who get messed up and with the in fleshly things, the two books of Corinthians of the Corinthians, uh, Acts chapter eighteen verses nine and ten. Then spake the Lord to Paul in a vision by night. Uh, bleh, excuse me. Then spake the Lord to Paul in the night by a vision. Be not afraid, but speak, and hold not thy peace. For I am with thee, and no man shall set on thee to hurt thee, for I have much people in the city. That didn't mean that, so, that he had so many people in his clique, as it were. But there were a lot of people in Corinth that were of the church of the living God. 
and a lot of fakes. And a lot also of the Church of the Living God who were messed up. You read about that in the book of the, the books of the uh, onto the Corinthians. But see, the Lord was with Paul. And what did he say? I'm with thee. Be not afraid, but speak. And hold not thy peace, for I am with thee. You do remember that, right? The Lord is with you. And, and another example, um, Acts 27. Acts 27, verses 23 and 25. The ship whom Paul warned the guys, is like, hey guys, I don't think we should do this, but the, the guys were like, we're not going to listen to you. I'm going to listen to the, the, the owner of the ship and the guys who know the sea better. <laughs> Talk about an ultimate I told you so here. Uh, Acts 27 verses 23 and 25. For there stood by me this night the angel of God, whose I am and whom I serve. This angel of God was the Lord himself. How do you know? Because it says whose I am and whom I serve. We don't belong to an angel. We don't serve angels. Okay. Uh, the angel of God, this is the Lord himself. Okay, I mean, look at that. Whose I am. Okay, we, we don't belong to Gabriel. We don't serve Michael. Okay. We serve the Lord Jesus Christ. So right there, the angel of God, right there is the Lord himself. Okay. Saying, fear not, Paul. Thou must be brought before Caesar, and lo, God hath given thee all them that sail with thee. Wherefore, sirs, be of good cheer, for I believe God, that it shall be even as it was told me. The Lord is with you to deliver you. And you know what? When your end, when that time comes, Realize that it's predetermined. When you reach your end, when you finally reach your end, that day, those moments when you realize, I'm about to die. Smile. Smile. Just smile. That's all you can do. If you're not saved, be terrified. Because in those last moments, that twinkling of the eye before, before you take your last, and that's when you think you're going to get saved, you're stupid. You're stupid. You live your life like a devil. And then in those last fleeting moments of life, you think you're going to repent truly and get saved. You're stupid. But, brethren, those last moments that we have, you're going to have it. Second Timothy 4. Verses 6 on to verse 8. For I am now ready to be offered, and the time of my departure is at hand. I have fought a good fight. I have finished my course. I have kept the faith. Henceforth there is laid up for me a crown of righteousness, which the Lord, the righteous judge, shall give me at that day, and not to me only, but unto all them also that love is appearing. Death smiles upon us all. The only thing that you and I as the church of the living God can do is smile back. Because we're going home. We're going home. John chapter 15. John chapter 15. We're almost done. Come on, John chapter 15, verses 1 and 5, on to verse 5. I am the true vine, and my father is the husbandman. 
Every branch in me that beareth not fruit, he taketh away. And every branch that beareth fruit, he purgeth it, that it may bring forth more fruit. Now ye are clean through the word which I have spoken unto you. Abide in me, and I in you. As the branch cannot bear fruit of itself, except it abide in the vine. No more can ye accept, ye abide in me. I am the vine, ye are the branches. He that abideth in me, and I in him, the same bringeth forth much fruit. For without me ye can do nothing. Psalm 48. Psalm 48, just one verse. Verse 14. And then we are done. For this God is our God forever and ever. He will be our guide even unto death. For me to speak the same thing to you is not grievous, but um, needful. It's needful. Of how Christ needs to be center in your life. Not only does he need to be the all of your life, you have to actually live as if he is. Because so many of us give that lip service that he is. But the cares of this world get in the way. Other things get in the way. And I'm telling you, when it comes to you facing your end, it's going gonna, it's gonna to change your shorts on you. That's going to be it for this video, dear brethren. Um, like I said, this was just a little reminder for you to keep Christ center in your life. We can't do it perfectly every day, 24 hours a day, 7 days a week. No, we can't because our spirit and soul are housed within this, yes. But um, Jesus Christ is that secret place. Are you there? That secret place which is our Lord Jesus Christ. We hide ourselves in the Lord not to escape reality, but to face reality. It's going to be it for this video. I'm going to get this uploaded. The Lord has bless, is blessing us with 70 degree weather this weekend. So, Praise the Lord, his will be done. Get out there and do something for the Lord today, uh, this week here by us. Um, also keep, uh, keep in memory that um, I have begun utilizing the backup channel, uh, putting uh, once a week a video will be uploaded on Least of All Fellowship. Uh, there were, it, the Lord usually has been giving me three videos to do a week. Um, one is going to be on Least of All Fellowship for a while. We'll see how, the, you know, so I'm going to be utilizing that so you know, okay? But anyway, that's going to be it. Thank you so much, brethren, for your prayers and to pray for one another. Also, too, apparently now I uh, on this channel, the community thing is now available. I got a notification on uh, yesterday that it was unlocked like oh boy okay so I'm gonna you I'm gonna use that thing uh, the community thing where you can post stuff I'm gonna use that prayer requests and stuff like that prayer requests you know stuff like that posting scripture you know uh, I'm gonna utilize that so you know okay that's gonna be utilized but, you know, prayer requests and mentions of uh, other channels, videos, mention to watch certain videos or whatever. I'm going to utilize that. Definitely. Definitely going to utilize that. So. But anyway, pray for one another, brethren. Keep each other in prayer. That's what we got. We have the Lord and we have each other. We love you. And thank you for those of you who pray for us who help us 
We love you very much and thank you. Thank you. We'll see you in the next video. Bye-bye.